Hey everybody. Hello, hello, hello. I hope you are doing well. So I'm coming live to you. I know that this is an unconventional time, um, but I have to get these videos done when I have time to get them done. So I'm coming live because I've been asked a lot of times to actually do a video on all of the uh, books that African American homeschoolers, Black homeschoolers, can use in their homeschooling journey, whether they're just getting getting started, whether they're hitting some bumps in the road, or whether they're just looking to expand their knowledge in terms of, you know, what they are, um, what the what kinds of information they're taking on to assist them in their homeschooling journey. So I wanted to come with you with a list of books. I have a whole list of books that I have read um, throughout my homeschooling journey. I'm just going to go through them one by one. Um, and this video will also be available on YouTube if you, or you can watch it on the replay, or the video will also be available on YouTube. So if you are a homeschooler, please make sure you comment, say hello. Um, and if you know a homeschooler or you're interested in becoming a homeschooler, or you know people who want to homeschool, make sure you share this video. My name is Muffy Mendoza. And I blog at brownmamas.com, and I'm also a homeschooler. I've been homeschooling my kids for, my, myself and my husband have been homeschooling our kids for four years now. This is our fourth year of homeschooling. So here's my video. So I have, like I said, a list of books. I'm going to start out with, of course, my book, The Brown Mama Mindset. Um, the Rama Mindset is my book. It is a life guide for black moms on life, love, and home. And I always like to say, before you can free your children, you got to free yourself, especially as a black mom. Um, that is the most important thing you can do is to free yourself. And that's what this book is all about. It's about um, knowing yourself so that you can love yourself, so that you can free yourself as a black woman. And that means for me, the Rama Mindset is all about being accountable because homeschooling first and foremost is about accountability. It is about saying to yourself that you are responsible for your children's education, that you are going to be the, the, the person who is going to guide them through their learning journey. And so the first thing you need to do is to get accountable with yourself. And that's what the Brown Mama Mindset is going to do for you. It's going to help you to get accountable with not only yourself, but also your home and your love life, which is very important because a lot of people forget that when you mother to son mother to daughter mother to husband mother to father these are all relationships that you are engaging in so first and foremost you have to get accountable about those relationships and the part that you play in those relationships and the part that you play in your home um a huge thing that happened when we started homeschooling when myself and my husband took our kids out of school and started homeschooling was it really shifted the dynamics in our household in terms of a lot of the tension that was there um, that no longer existed because of now these outward forces that were conducting that were basically in our children's lives through schooling were no longer um, there. So that released a lot of attention, but tension, but it also put a lot of attention, the spotlight kind of glared on our household and how our household was running. Because now we have these three beings who are here with us all day and if anybody knows kids, then you know that your kids are a mirror for you. They show you every day what you're putting into them and also what the outside world is putting into them. So, you know, as I was writing the Brown Mama Mindset, because I wrote this book over the course of four years, I really just started to learn what I need, what my children needed from me by them reflecting what I was putting into them. So the Brown Mama Mindset is all about you getting accountable for your life as a black woman and what that needs to look like and the questions you need to ask yourself. This book actually comes with a, um, a deck of cards. I call them mom check cards because they are literally cards with questions on them for you to question your state of being and your state of accountability. So that's my first book on the list for a list of books that black homeschoolers should read is my book, The Brown Mama Mindset, A Blueprint for Black Moms on Life, Love, and Home. And of course, I'm going to be putting all these in the comments. So I'll put that one down first. The second um, book on my list is Amos. Well, here's what I'll say. The next two books on my list are going to be Amos Wilson books because Amos Wilson, outside of my father, Amos Wilson was really the one who really started to spark my thoughts and attention in regards to homeschooling my kids. 
and why it was important that I did that. I love Amos Wilson. So this first book is called Awakening the Natural Genius of Black Children. And in this book, he kind of just lays out the flame, the framework for the genius of black children and some of the reasons why our children are experiencing a retarded or stunted growth in academic environments and compulsory schooling environments. And I love that he lays out in this book, um, number one, a lot of the studies that have been done that show that African American children are gifted, are talented, are a lot of times even more advanced at a younger age than a lot of the um, than a lot of their counterparts. And in this book, he also gives you kind of like a blueprint for what you need to do, what milestones you need to be uh, cognizant of and all the things that you need to do in order to make sure that you are in fact um, sparking that creative genius in your child. So this is one of the books that I definitely recommend that you read. So Awakening the Natural Genius of Black Children by Amos Wilson. And we just got our Amos Wilson collection, actually. We just bought this collection last year. So a lot of these books look really new because these are the newer versions. I have some of the older ones. I've read them um, from my father's collection. So this book is called the, the Developmental Psychology of the African Child, of the Black Child. And so this is a really good book, but it's not an easy read. And I can say I've only read like the first two chapters of this book. But so far, what I've read has been more than enough. And that is one of the reasons why I love Amos Wilson, because he takes these complex issues of, like I said, the psychology and the development of black children. And he breaks it down in layman's terms. Um, and bottom line with Amos, so much of his stuff you can find on YouTube. So if you go on YouTube, of course, we definitely want to support our scholars and our activists who are out here doing the hard work of looking for these studies um, that are showing the advancement of black children and doing the hard work of you know, doing the, of going out into community, creating surveys and finding all this good information. But you can also find a lot of his books um, or a lot of his speeches on YouTube. And Amos Wilson asked a question um, that really highlighted and, and got me thinking about homeschooling. And the question he asked is education for what? Education for who? You know, those are questions we need to ask when we are thinking about the learning processes of our children is what who are children being educated for? Is it enough for a black child to be educated just for them to go into another community and go into that community and, you know, and create advancement there and spark creativity there? If that child is not then able to take what that child has learned and take it back into his own community and create community there and create excellence there and greatness there, then is that really an education at all? What type of education are we giving our children if our children are getting an education that is not pulling us forward, that is not pulling the very mother and father who've worked so hard um, to make sure that they were educated, if it's not giving them a leg up. So those are the questions we need to ask. And developmental psychology of, black, of the black child really asks you to examine whether or not the learning environments that we currently have our children in are actually stifling our children or if they are, if they are sparking that creative genius in our children. So this is the third book on the list that I recommend. And I'm a, be putting these links in the comments as we go. So just be patient with me. Let me get the other two links. So these are the two links for the Amos Wilson books. Um, you can get them, of course, on Amazon. And like I said, you can also, with Amos, you can also find a lot of his videos on YouTube. So you can go on YouTube and um, look for his videos and find them there. Mm. Here we go. So those are the other two books by Amos Wilson. And then, so a couple of years back, or not even a couple of years, it's really been like just about a year, I started really getting into numerology. And this was one of the first numerology books that I read. Numerology is so fantastic at helping you to understand your children. A lot of people don't understand what numbers really are. Numbers are vibrational tones. And just like a tone, if you're listening to somebody sing, a soprano, an alto, um, I can't even remember the other ones, but soprano, alto, bass, you're listening to somebody sing, right? And it sparks a certain type of emotion in you. Well, numbers are the same way. Numbers are put on vibrational tones to describe characteristics and skill sets and natural innate talents and whatnot. And numerology is one of those things that you can really do to help you to understand your child and begin to understand their creative genius and where their innate natural talents are. This is one of the first books I got. It's called Numbers Are Simple, People Are Complicated. But I really, really recommend 
his name is what is his brother's name i have his book actually on um on kindle so i couldn't show it to you guys because this book is the book i have on kindle but uh, i wrote it down numbers and you a numerology guide for everyday living that is the book that i'm going to recommend if you are able to you can go ahead out and get this numbers or simple people are complicated it's a really quick guide to numerology um but if you really want to get a little bit deeper and get some better personal explanations about your child's numbers and how to calculate their numbers in numerology and all that i would really um recommend recommend the everyday guide which is called again numbers and you a numerology guide for everyday living but I, I would say that once I started learning a little bit of numerology, and I'm by far not definitely not a master, but once I started learning a little bit of it and just being able to apply that little bit of knowledge to my household, it like worked wonders. Because what numerology does is just tells you what your innate skills are and also what your default personality and characteristics are. So I highly, highly, highly recommend learning. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, sis. Um, deeply rooted homeschool. Thank you so much for commenting. I highly, highly, highly recommend numerology. Please, if you are thinking about, even if you're not thinking about homeschooling, get some numerology. Like, get you a book, decode those numbers. It will help you so much in understanding your children's innate personalities and just their natural skills. Because really, what homeschooling is really, really about, it's about being a guide for your child so they can discover their natural genius that's really what it's about homeschooling a lot of people when they think of homeschooling they think about oh i'm going to take what's happening in my kids classroom and just going to transplant it in my house number one that hardly ever works as a matter of fact i don't know any of my homeschooling friends who have said that taking the classroom and just putting it in their house like getting the chalkboard and the desk and stuff like that works for most of my homeschooling friends, that has not worked at all. So it really is a process by which you go through to figure out what is best for you first. Remember we said that in the Brown Mama Mindset. The first thing you got to do is free yourself. So if you want to free yourself, this is the first book you need to get, the Brown Mama Mindset. But when you are talking about learning your children, we're going to talk about this next for the next book. You need to witness your kids, and then you need to figure out what their innate talents and abilities really really are so that you're not spending time a lot of times what happens in these regular schools and these um uh what do they call them what the akila richards calls them uh and foolishness she instead of calling it schoolishness she calls it foolishness a lot of times what happens in foolishness is that our children are being taught mundane things that they will never use instead of focusing on their innate talents and abilities so if you really want to get deep about what your kids talents and abilities are get you some get you a numerology book and i'll post that i'm wait let me post that link too i'm posting all the links in the comments so y'all will have them and make sure you share this video if you're on here right now i would really appreciate it if you share it invite your friends to come watch okay so that's that the next book this is actually a book that i read while i was on my cruise this summer me and my husband went on a cruise and i read this book while i was on the cruise and it was it was a godsend because I was one of those parents who tried to just take the classroom and put it into <laughs> my house. And for two years, it did not work. Like it's, I was so stressed out over what my kids were learning. And once I really started to get real about myself, I actually have went and I'm going to recommend her podcast too. If you know Akila S. Richards, if you have time, go to AkilaSRichards.com. Listen to her podcast. It will give you life. Let me tell you, it will give you life. But I went to go hear her Akilah speak when she came to Pittsburgh one time and they had this book there called Free to Learn. I love this book because what this book really pointed out for me in the same way the developmental psychology of the black child does, because Amos was where I read it first that actually Amos breaks down and he breaks down in this book how in indigenous African societies, the children were never quote unquote educated. But Everybody knows, every social scientist knows that it has been proven that children from Uganda, Jamaica, in all these places where these children are learning and growing and travel, travel life are so much more advanced than American European children because they are basically learning as a way of life versus learning in these forced coercive settings 
that are not allowing them to just innately and in a free way express their natural talents and abilities. And so that's what you're going to learn about in Free to Learn. This book is by Peter Gray. Is that his name? Yeah, Peter Gray, Free to Learn. That's what he talks a lot about in this book is just he talks a lot about the outdated models for educating children, and he makes a case for free learning self-directed learning, I guess, if you will, that's what they call it, self-directed learning, unschooling. So all of those things are, you know, what he talks about in this book. And this guy is a white guy, um, but there's some great information in this book. And I would even say, read this first, The Developmental Psychology of the Black Child, and then read Free to Learn. And it will completely transform your ideas around what children really need to learn. And I always like to tell Black parents in particular, they always say there's no handbook for parenting. There is. There is so a handbook for parenting. Your indigenous ancestors wrote the handbook, but they won't let us read it because we don't want to go search book to book and go look for our information because all of these books, even my book, I didn't have a choice but to go back and reference all of these studies that are talking about the advancement of African children early on with no quote unquote education. Because we have to begin to understand the difference between education and learning. So education is really a cultural system by which values um, that uphold a cultural system are transmitted. So when you're talking about education, educating a children, child, you're really not talking about one, two, threes, and four, five, six. You're really talking about politics. You're really talking about transmitting the values from a specific culture into children. It has nothing to do, you can look up the word educate. It has nothing to do with learning. It has to do with persuasion. It has to do with getting children to understand the way that they are expected to conduct themselves in society. And I would venture to say most parents who homeschool realize after the first year how easy it is for kids to get the one, two, threes and ABCs. That is the easy part. The harder part is transmitting those cultural values and morals. And especially if you are African-American and you're living in a Western society that has so many views or ha that is so domineering when it comes to culture. Um, the harder part of homeschooling is just kind of resubmitting that information to your children in a way that they can understand, especially if they've been schooled in foolishness. Because my oldest son, thank God, you know, I was just blessed with my older son in that he has people around him who are, you know, transmitting the values and the principles that we really want for him. But he was in school for eight years. My other two children were only in school two to three years. Um, so it was a little bit, it's a little bit easier with them. But I would definitely, definitely, definitely recommend reading these two books back to back. So if you can get Amos Wilson's The Developmental Psychology of the Black Child, it's like $17 and free to learn and read those books, it will completely transform. And then back that up with Akila S. Richards' podcast, it'll completely transform the way you think about how children learn. And that is so important, transforming the way you think about how, how children learn and the numerology. And then the other book is The Warrior Method. This is one of my books that I'm like constantly reading and constantly going through because this book is specific to African-American males. Um, like I said, did I already tell you? Please share the video. Please invite your friends to watch the video. Um, this book is specific to African-American males. The Warrior Method is one of my favorite books. I actually had an opportunity, and I got to get these interviews out, to interview Raymond Wimbush um, about this book. And... He actually just did a reprisal to this book. That's how popular the book is. This book was written back in the 90s, I want to say. Let me look at the copyright. It was either the 80s or the 90s. Actually, it was early 2000s. So it was in 2001. This book was written in 2001, and he just reprised this book um, just to include updated information. But what this book is really about is showing us how our parenting methods are not creating warriors out of our sons and how the schooling environments that our, our sons are in are actually breaking them down instead of, you know, upholding them. And my favorite part in this book by far has been just reading about the parenting styles and, real, and, and having the a moment of accountability and that kumbaya moment when you realize that as a parent, you are really parenting the white way. And you are, I guess I said the white way. There is he breaks it down in this book with the difference between parenting the white way and parenting the black way. And I think that that is very, I think you have to get very clear on that before you start homeschooling your kids. 
And listen, if you want to parent the white way, I ain't mad at you. That's them is your kids. You got to deal with that, not me. But if you want to know the difference, and if you want to understand not only the difference, but how that is affecting your children, how these classrooms with all white teachers and these classrooms that are coercive and domineering are affecting your sons, this is the book to read. And I won't, I'm, I'm always, always, always going to talk about accountability, right? Because that's what all of these books, if you read any of these books, what it's going to do is call you into supreme accountability. And it is not going to be comfortable, y'all. Let me just. I'm just going to be 100 with you. Like, it's not comfortable. A lot of people ask me about homeschooling, and they look at it as like this promised land of milk and honey. And I'm like, it is that. I ain't going to lie. Like, sometimes a lot of the women that I be around and that I know are always talking about the problems that they have with their kids. And I sometimes don't think that they realize that the problem is not the kid. The problem is the school. It's not the kid, yeah. Because... I don't have in all of the problems I had when my sons were in school, I no longer had. My son's not on punishment all the time. I'm not arguing with my son all the time about, you know, him getting in trouble at school. And it also illuminated for me what the teachers are going through in the classroom, like the constant dropping of the pencil. Now, it's different when you got three kids versus you got 30. When you got 30 kids and all of them dropping a pencil all at one time and all of them asking to go to the bathroom all at one time. As a parent, it helps you to understand what teachers are going through. But it also helps you to understand what types of environments are needed in order for children to prosper in learning and not just be educated, quote unquote. So there's that. And then this book. Now, this book, this is a science book. It don't look like a science book, but it is. It's called The Magical Child by Joseph Chilton Pierce. So I was listening to one of my favorite African activists a couple of weeks ago, and he talked about how Western culture has basically, what it has done to pregnancy and to being with child is it's actually brought chaos into the womb. And it talks a lot about, this book doesn't talk about it, but I'm listening to this African activist talking about just the fact of all the toxins that are now in the womb, all of the stress that is now in the womb, that these things did not previously exist before American Western society became the dominant society in our world. And what Joseph Chilton Pierce does in The Magical Child is he helps you to understand why serenity is so important for children why happiness is so important for children, why children need stability and love. Because basically when a child is in the womb, that child is, the, the, that mom, the womb, the presence of the mother is the world for that child. And when that child exits the womb, that child is then exiting into a new world that it now has to conquer. It takes nine months for the child in your womb to be comfortable in your womb, to understand your womb, to know your womb. And at nine months, nature has determined that the child has completely now mastered the space of the womb, of the woman, of, of you. You are God at that point to that child. When the child exits the womb, you still are that. And then you there's a bonding that takes place between yourself and your child. And then the child goes on to master these various steps outside of the womb experience. And this book is really great for understanding how trauma affects children. And it's really great for understanding the science behind why compulsory children's schooling is such a bad experience for our children, or at least in the way that it's being done in this very dom dominant, domineering, coercive way, why it is stressful for children why we are experiencing high suicide rates around children, why children are sadder and more depressed than they've ever been. And this book provides a great basis for understanding what is actually necessary in order for children to go into adult, adulthood confident and happy. And a lot of times I think, and I'm going to post these links, a lot of times I think we grossly underestimate the happiness of children and how important it is for our children to be happy. And what Joseph Chilton Pierce does is he really, really breaks down why that's important. And then I also had another book that I wanted to recommend, um, but I just, I loaned it to my sister and she didn't give it back to me yet. Um, please give me my book back. Well, I'll go get it. I'll come get it anyway. <laughs> but there's a book called Kendezi, The African Art of Babysitting. And I loved that book because it really gave me a really great understanding 
of what of why babysitting is not just babysitting why it is important that the adults who are being entrusted with the educating rearing the i don't like to say educating but the the learning experiences the rearing the loving of our children why it is important that we are present that we are well informed and that we are um up to speed when it comes to dealing with our children and educating our children. So Kendezi, the African art of babysitting is just that. It talks a lot about the African art of babysitting, what it means to be a babysitter, how, how babysitting as a job, as an occupation was taken so seriously. It is taken so seriously in African culture and how we can begin to you know, implement those same ideas around child rearing being so important and being, you know, a staple of our community um, into our lives. So those are the books that I have for y'all. I'm just gonna go through them again. I've got The Magical Child by Joseph Chilton Pierce, The Warrior Method by Raymond Wimbush. This one is Numbers Are Simple, um, People Are Complicated for Numerology, but I also recommend Numbers in You, a Numerology Guide for Everyday Living, Free to Learn by Peter Gray, Developmental Psychology of the Black Child by Amos Wilson. Awakening the Natural Genius of Black Children, also by Amos Wilson. And also my book, The Brown Mama Mindset by me, Muffy Mendoza. It's a blueprint for black moms on life, love, and home. Make sure you share the video. Thank you so much for tuning in. You can also find the same video on my YouTube channel. I'll be posting it there as soon as I'm done. Thank y'all for tuning in. I appreciate y'all and I want y'all to have an awesome day. If you are thinking about or considering homeschooling your children, you can always inbox me and ask me questions um, or post on the Brown Mamas fan page. Inbox the Brown Mamas fan page. I don't mind getting back to you. Um, and that's what I got for today. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Muffy Mendoza. I blog at brownmamas.com. You can always find me here on the Brown Mamas Facebook page. All right, y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.